Welcome to this introduction to secure multiparty computation. We are going to build on Shamir's secret sharing scheme which we discussed in a previous video where we saw a gentle introduction to secret sharing by means of polynomials. It also introduced the fairly complicated Lagrange interpolation to reconstruct a polynomial given a number of points on that polynomial. And that introduction is, and I'm being modest here, much more accessible than any other introduction on the topic that I have seen. It also should leave you with an understanding of why Lagrange interpolation works. In the last video, I promised to discuss secure multiparty computation next, so here it is. However, since you need to understand the Shamir secret sharing scheme for this introduction, let me quickly recap. In this sharing scheme, we want to share some secret value. We do this by creating a secret polynomial of degree t, such that f of 0 evaluates the value of the secret. We then give other points on that polynomial as shares to various people. If somehow at least t plus 1 shares are combined, it is possible to determine the unique shape of f using Lagrange interpolation meaning that it is possible to find the secret value at f0. If this does not ring enough bells, please check out the previous video first. As a common example for introducing secure multiparty computation, we are considering the scenario of anonymous voting. And this example is shown only for educational purposes, since, as will become clear at the end of the video, there are a number of shortcomings that would break the example in practice. Let's consider the situation where Boo, Mike and Sully are at Monsters University. Late one night, they are studying hard and the question rises whether they should read another book on scaring or go to sleep. They decide to do a simple majority voting. So everyone who wants to study another book votes 1 and everybody who wants to go to sleep votes 0. We then simply add up all the votes and find that, in this case, the majority wants to keep studying. Now, maybe Sully does not want to appear like a weak or lazy or responsible monster, so it would be great for him if the voting was done anonymously. That is, if there was a way that the three parties could compute the sum of the votes without revealing who voted what. Of course, since we learned the sum of the votes, there is no way we can avoid Sully learns that both Boo and Mike voted 1, but we should aim to prevent Boo or Mike from learning who was the person that voted 0. This privacy preserving requirement will be the only property of secure multiparty computation that we focus on in this video. But before we dive into the protocol, let's remind ourselves of two properties when we combine polynomials by addition. Let's say we have two polynomials of the same degree k. Then, if we define f to be the sum of those two polynomials, we will find that f is also of degree k. Furthermore, for each value of x, f of x will be simply the sum of the value of x for each of the other two polynomials. And those properties are quite easy to see. For example, when summing two polynomials, it is quite clear that no higher degree, such as x to the power of 3 or 4, are introduced since this would only happen if we were to multiply with x at some point. Also, the second property is quite straightforward. Here, g of 2 evaluates to 1 plus 4 plus 12, which is 17, and h of 2 evaluates to 2 minus 2 plus 4, which is 4, and indeed f of 2 becomes 3 plus 2 plus 16, which is 21, which is also the sum of 17 and 4. Now with that out of the way, how can we combine this with secret sharing to achieve our secure computation? We start by having each party encode their vote as a secret polynomial of degree 2, that is, one less than the number of parties. Since Boo voted 1, her polynomial will be of the shape 1 plus something times x plus something times x squared. Mike will have a polynomial of the same shape and Sully will instead have 0 as the value of his secret. Now what happens if we sum these three polynomials together? By the simple properties of addition, we know that it will have the shape 
2 plus something times x plus something times x squared. In other words, f of 0 will evaluate to the result of the vote. Furthermore, we know that the polynomial is of degree 2, meaning that we can determine that polynomial if we have 3 points or shares on its line. So, let's find out how this works in our concrete example and how we ultimately can get 3 points on that summed polynomial f so that we can find the outcome of the vote. We start with the polynomial for boo. Now, I am showing the polynomials for complete lists, but don't focus too much on the coefficients. The important part is that for x is 0, the value of the polynomial is indeed 1, the vote of boo. Otherwise, I've just crafted this and all other polynomials in the video, just so that they go nicely through discrete values in the plot. As with the secret sharing scheme, Boo gives the shares of her polynomial to Mike and Sunny. She also keeps one share for herself. I highlighted the values of x for which each of the parties received their share, because they will be collecting several. It is important that they get their shares consistently for the same value of x, as will become clear in a moment. It is also important that the other parties are well behaving and do not reveal to each other the shares they got from Boo. At this point in the protocol, secret sharing guarantees that even if Mike and Sully put their shares together, not knowing Boo's share means that it is equally likely that she voted 0 or 1. However, as we build up more information in the computation, Combining these secret shares will ultimately result in Mike and Sully sharing their own votes to each other. And of course, combining this with the outcome of the entire voting computation will make it easy for them to conclude what Boo must have voted. Since there is information theoretically, no way to prevent this, the protocol necessarily assumes that at least half the parties are well behaving and not collaborating. For more of such details, I'm adding some references at the end of this video. Moving on, Mike picks his secret polynomial, again making sure that at x is 0, the value of the polynomial is 1, his vote. Each of Boo, Mike and Sully receive shares of this polynomial. And finally, also Sully crafts a secret polynomial. He makes sure that for x is 0, the value is 0, because that is his vote. Alright, so let's have an overview of the shares that have been given out so far. Wu knows the shares of all three polynomials for x is 1, Mike knows the shares for x is 2, and Sully knows the shares for x is 3. Importantly, they do not share this information with the other parties. Now, recall that we needed three points of the sub polynomial f in order to use Lagrange interpolation and find out the shape of f as well as its value at f0, the outcome of the voting. So, the question therefore is, do we have three distinct points of f? Here we should remember the second property of adding polynomials. For each of the values of x, we can sum the values of the individual polynomials at x, and we get the value of f of x. So yes, that means that Boo can compute f of 1, Mike can compute f of 2, and Sully can compute f of 3, all by simple addition. So, Boo computes f of 1 as 0 plus minus 1 plus 1, which is 0. She releases this result of adding the shares publicly. That is, Mike and Sully learn that the value of f1 is 0. Similarly, Mike adds up 0, minus 1 and 1, which also gives 0, and makes this value of f2 publicly known. Finally, Sully adds up 1, 1 and 0, which gives that the value of f of 3 is 2, and he announces this to the others as well. We now have 3 points on the polynomial f, so let's use our old friend Lagrange interpolation to find out what is the second degree polynomial uniquely determined by these 3 points. And there it is. Importantly, we can see that the value of f at 0 is indeed the outcome of the vote. And since all parties have the three points of f, all parties are able to compute this outcome. Additionally, we see that the summed polynomial is indeed the sum of the three secret polynomials. Now, let's quickly verify that Boo indeed does not learn whether it was Mike or Sully who voted the value of zero. Here, we have all the information that Boo has at the end of the computation. 
She knows her own polynomial, the shares she receives from the other parties, and the three points of f. As we already saw in the actual run of the protocol, it could be the case that Mike votes yes and Sully voted no. However, based on Boo's information, it is equally likely that Mike voted no and Sully voted yes, because there exist choices for the coefficients of their polynomials that would keep this in line with the information that Boo observed. As you can see, the shares that Mike would receive would still add up to zero, and for Sully, they still would add up to two. But the values of the secret polynomials at x is zero are different. And if you are confused by the polynomial of Sully here, this is a valid second degree polynomial in this case, as Sully has simply chosen the value of zero for the coefficients of x and x squared. As a final spectacle of colors, here you can see the two possible realities that Boo has to consider side by side. Now this example was for educational purposes only, because there are a number of shortcomings that you may have already spotted. First, there is no verification of the secret polynomials used by the different parties. For example, Sully could have set his polynomial to evaluate to minus 2 when x is 0, completely ruining the result of the vote. Another issue is that in the way we presented the example, parties distribute their secret shares and announce the sum of their obtained shares one by one. This makes it possible for the last party to simply lie about the sum's value of shares and announce a value that ensures that the final polynomial sums up to whatever this party desires. As an exercise, you could try this out and see how Sully can simply announce a different number for f of 3 so that f of 0, the voting result, becomes 0. A third shortcoming is that we only looked into a computation doing simple addition. Doing something more fancy like multiplication becomes more involved since the resulting polynomials would increase in degree. If you are interested in the topic, a good place to start is the original paper introducing the algorithm, also known as the BGW protocol after the last names of the authors. It also introduces a way to deal with multiplication. Another interesting paper is the one listed below that, which gives a formal proof that the BGW protocol indeed satisfies all the properties we desire for secure multiparty computation. That's the end of this video. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.